Hi again, folks. Um, so today what we're going to do is we're going to take our quadratics a little bit further, um, and we're going to do something called disguised quadratics, which is going to let us solve equations that don't really look like quadratics. We're going to use our quadratic method by showing that our equation is really a quadratic. It's just a little bit hidden. All right. So um, disguised, qu disguised quadratics is our title. And our goal is uh, to sometimes use our quadratic method, even though the equation doesn't look like a quadratic. Okay. And my thing that I want to show you is that you've actually already done this. Okay. So here's a very simple example. If we want to solve this, you guys have already factored something like that. Okay, you've done that like last semester. Okay, now a lot of you guys will know that I can break this down into remember the first two things have to multiply to x to the fourth. So I'll do x squared times x squared. Okay, and then I need two things to multiply to negative 12 and add to negative 4. Well, that is um, negative 6 and positive 2. Okay. So now let's go through our solutions, right? Either this factor is 0, which means that x squared is negative 2, which means that x is the square root, plus or minus, of negative 2, which means that x is plus or minus i roots of 2, okay? Or we have that this thing is 0. So x squared minus 6 is 0, which means that x squared is 6, which means that x is plus or minus square root of 6. Okay, so there's my four solutions. Plus or minus the square root of 6, plus or minus i roots of 2. Okay, so see that? I used my quadratic factoring method and then solving a quadratic down here even though this is not a quadratic. Okay? This is a fourth power equation. All right, so we want to see what other situations we can do this in. So um, here's one we're going to try. Okay, Now, if I expand all this, it will become ridiculous. Okay, It will just be unmanageable. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, oh, look at that. I've got the same thing here and here. Okay. So what I, why I want to use that is I'm going to say, well, let's make that whole thing. So I'm going to say let x squared minus x be, I don't know, let's call it m. Okay. And now what this becomes is m squared minus 26m plus 120 is equal to 0. All right. Well, now let's solve this. All right. So it just starts with one m squared. So that means m times m has to happen. And I need things to multiply to one twenty and add to negative twenty six. Things that multiply to one twenty. Uh, six times twenty comes to mind because that's twenty six. So negative six, negative twenty. Okay. So we have that m minus 6 is 0, which means that m is 6. And we have that m minus 20 is 0, which means that m equals 20. Okay. Now, I want to bring your attention to the fact that m is um, x squared minus x. Okay. So if I had x in my question, my answer needs to be x equals something. Okay. So what that means is that I want, instead of m equals 6, I want to say x squared minus x is equal to 6. Well, that means that x squared minus x, sorry,
So that means that x squared minus x minus 6 is 0. Means that x minus 3, x plus 2 is 0. And that means that x is 3, or x is negative 2. Right, so I've got two solutions here. Now remember, m was kind of like an intermediate step, so my final answer is x. And I also know that x squared minus x is equal to 20. Well, that means that x squared minus x minus 20 is 0. It means that x minus 5 times x, minus, uh, x plus 4 is 0. Well, that means that x is 5 or x is negative 4, right? So see now, I've got my four answers. x could be 3, could be negative 2, could be 5, or could be negative 4, okay? All four of these equations, or sorry, all four of those solutions will fit into this, okay? All right. So now let's see one more. It's a little bit different. Um, so it says 3 to the 2x minus 12 times 3 to the x plus 27 is 0. Okay. So this was a little bit harder to notice, but we know by our exponent rules that I can take this guy and I can write him as 3 to the x squared minus 12, 3 to the x plus 27 is equal to 0, right? So the reason why we know we can do this is because, remember, exponent of an exponent means we can multiply exponents. So if we can multiply exponents, we can split them into exponent of an exponent. And the reason why we want to do this is because now we can say let, uh, let's make it q equal 3 to the x. So what that gives us is q squared minus 12q plus 27 is equal to 0. Okay. Now we want to factor this. Two things that multiply to 27 and add to negative 12. Multiply to 27 3 times 9. Negative 3 and negative 9 are negative 12. So that means that q minus 3 times q minus 9 is the factoring of that. So this gives us that q is 3 and that q is 9, okay? But remember, again, I don't want to know what q is. I want to know what x is, okay? So remember, q was 3 to the x. So 3 to the x is 3. Well, that x has to be 1, right? Because 3 to the power of 1 is 3. And here... 3 to the x is 9, well, that x has to be 2, right? Because 3 squared is 9. Okay, so there's our two solutions. Okay, so x is 1, x is 2. Now, in this case, it worked out really nicely, and it will for us, but we will get to other cases where it doesn't work out as nicely. Okay? So, there's your homework for the day. And I will see you guys tomorrow.